Okay, so today uh, we'll be discussing uh, chapter 10 of the book, which is all about uh, exploratory data analysis. Uh, I think uh, the chapter, will, the discussion section will be led by Christian uh, Mosier. I don't know if you are ready, you can just uh, go ahead and share your screen so that we start with the discussion. Great, okay, so um, this week we're looking into exploratory data analysis. It's one of my favorite topics within data science, um, and it's a great way to learn about um, the contents of your data. So our learning objectives, first we want to recognize the two types of questions that will always be useful for making discoveries within your data what type of variation occurs within my variables and what type of covariation occurs between my variables. Um, we'll also explore the variation within the variables of op our observations. We'll deal with outliers and missing values in the data and explore the covariation between the variables of our observations. And finally, we'll recognize how models can be used to explore patterns in the data. So there are a couple of vocabulary terms that we're going to be using. First, a variable is a quantity, quality, or property that you can measure. A value is the state of a variable when you measure it, which can change. An observation is a set of measurements made under similar conditions. And there's one observation value per variable. Uh, tabular data is observations of variables and tidy data is um, data that has already been um, cleaned. There's one observation per row, one variable per column, and one value per cell. And this definition can depend on what you're trying to answer. So we're going to be analyzing um, uh, very common diamonds data set um, as we go through this exploratory data analysis. And first we're going to dive into variation. The first question that we wanted to answer was uh, what variation exists within our data. Um, variation is the tendency of values of a variable to change between measurements. Um, and a categorical variable can only take on certain values. So we visualize this variation with a bar chart. Using the ggplot library, then we first load the diamonds data set. Um, we are looking specifically at uh, the cut values and then um, plotting that uh, as a bar chart. So as you can see here, um, this distribution is uh, really nice between the different categories, um, but we still have not seen the variation that occurs within this data set. Um, again, continuous variables can take on an infinite set of ordered values. And these are the ones that we uh, visualize with a histogram rather than the bar chart that you saw previously. So an example of a continuous variable is the caret value from the diamonds data set. We're um, plotting using ggplot again um, with the bin width of 0 0.5, just to show um, how big each of our bars within the histogram are going to be. You can see the histogram here. Um, the tail of our histogram is pointing to the right, um, indicating the skew of that value. And um, as an alternative to using the geometric histogram, we can also use geomfreak poly, um, which doesn't show bars. And we also have the option of using the pipe um, notation, 
which we spoke about in a previous class. Think about pipe as and then, and think of the plus sign as with or and. So here we're um, plotting uh, the geom freak poly, the um, uh, alternative to the geometric histogram um, with a thinner bin width uh, using the caret data, which was um, continuous and um, coloring according to cut, which was another um, continuous variable. And um, here is what that looks like when we plot it. You can see that for each of the different um, carrots of diamonds, you have a difference in cut. And this is where we first see our variation among the variables. So there are a number of questions that um, should come up in your analysis of variation um, at the beginning of your exploratory data analysis. The first question is which values are the most common and why? Uh, which values are rare and why? Um, and whether or not that matches our expectations. And then we also want to know if we see any unusual patterns and um, try to look into what might explain them. And it should be noted that this data set that we're using is very tidy and um, doesn't have a lot of the um, uh, variation that we would typically see in um, a raw data set. So as we um, move through this data set, we can also look through um, the histogram of subplots. So here we use ggplot, um, plotting smaller, which was a variable that we uh, defined earlier. And then with caret as our x-axis, um, we plot another histogram with a bin width of 0.01. And now we get to see um, a categorical grouping that happens within the um, uh, histogram. So this subgrouping has created even more questions. So first we want to know how are the observations within each cluster similar to each other? How are the observations in uh, separate cl clusters different from each other? Can we explain or describe the clusters? Um, why might the appearance of clusters be misleading? And we can see again, just like the um, overall histogram, we have a tail to the right um, indicating skew in this direction um, for each one of these subgroupings, which might give us a little bit more information about the data in general. So we can use um, the plotting um, tool coordinate Cartesian to zoom in and see if there are any unusual values. Um, in case we do see some strange values, it's okay to drop those as long as we're able to um, explain and disclose um, the explanation for why we're dropping variables. So in raw data sets, you often come across missing values. Um, this can occur um, as a result of user error or um, uh, other external issues that prevent us from getting a complete data set. Um, that's not really the case in um, most of the pre-programmed data sets that we use. But if you do have missing values, then you have two options for dealing with them. First, you can drop the entire row, which is a terrible way to deal with that because you no longer um, are accessing any of the other features that are associated with that row. Um, but another option is to replace 
the missing value with NA, um, or if you were doing this in another language, it might be NAN, not a number in Python. Um, and the reason that you would do this is so that the absence of the value does not um, detract from the overall analysis. So if you wanted to replace with NA, then you can um, ascribe a new value. Um, this variable is called diamonds2, and we're taking our diamonds data set and working with it such that we mutate um, if the value is um, not a number um, or empty, then we're going to replace with um, NA. So if Y is less than three, or if Y is greater than 20, then we replace with um, NA. And please correct me if I'm wrong in that interpretation. I think uh, you are correct there. What that line does is that we have specified a condition if y is less than three or y is greater than 20. So if that condition is true, it will be NA. Then if that condition of is false, it's going to re re leave everything as y. Okay, so the y here is the else part of that? So the Y there is for the false condition. So once that condition is false, so it's going to leave everything as Y, just okay. as it is in the actual data set. Okay, excellent. And um, it should be noted that ggplot2 will give a warning when there are values missing, um, but you can suppress that warning with na.rm equals true. So the second question that we wanted to look into was whether or not there was covariation between the variables. Covariation is the tendency of values of different variables to vary together in a related way. Um, visualizing covariance depends on the types of variables in the pair. So if you're, for example, analyzing um, categorical versus continuous variables, then you'll want to use a geometric box plot. Um, there is a tutorial here that you can use um, to visualize the rain cloud plots with ggplot2 um, as a geometric box plot. Um, if you're analyzing categorical versus categorical variables, then you can visualize this as a count. Um, and you can do that using the D plier count um, and a geometric tile. Um, and if you're measuring continuous versus continuous vari variables for their covariation, you have the option of using um, a hex plot, a 2D bin, or a, a pointer scatter plot. And I think I was trying to plot these in um, our studio. And for some reason, it wasn't knitting together um, that data. But that's uh, an option for later. So um, another thing to do as you're moving through exploratory data analysis is to try to find patterns. Um, the questions that you should ask yourself are whether or not the patterns are due to coincidence, which would be random chance. Um, how you can describe the relationship implied by the pattern. Um, how strong the relationship implied by the pattern is and what other variables might affect the relationship, as well as does the relationship change if you look at individual subgroups of the data, which is what we did when we were looking at the diamonds data set.
So we can um, do this analysis of finding patterns um, using ggplot. Um, this is uh, a plot of eruptions of the geyser Old Faithful. The data set is called Faithful. We're um, mapping with our x equal to the eruptions column in the Faithful data set. And um, this is, again, the um, alternative to a histogram when you're doing exploratory data analysis, this geom freak poly, um, which is uh, the polynomial frequency of your data with a bin width of 0.25. And here you can see the frequency of eruptions of Old Faithful and how um, that looks when we plot it in ggplot2. So this would be a good opportunity to find patterns in the data and um, note that the um, frequency of eruptions tends to be um, one of two values. Uh, we continue with um, adding on in ggplot uh, the eruptions data and the geom freak poly again with a bin width of 0.25. And we also have the option of um, plotting um, separately. These are um, first the uh, data set itself, and then our um, bin width of 0.25 of the eruptions um, with uh, geom freak poly. And to me, um, all of these are identical. I don't really see a difference in each of these um, ways of adding together the um, ggplot components. Um, I'm sure in some situations it might be um, more necessary to be elegant with the code. And in that case, then you have the least uh, code in this last way, but it all produces the same plot. Um, am I missing anything here? No, no, I think it's okay, it's okay. Okay. Um, so I think that's everything. Um, this is just a link to the, to join the book clubs for um, not just R for Data Science, but the other um, Tidyverse and other books that are available. Um, there's a graph of R visualizations and the R cookbook also has a section of graphs that can be um, looked into. So I'll open up the floor for questions and turn it back over to Olua Femi. Oh, I think you're on mute. Okay, sorry. Thank you very much uh, for presenting the chapter. I think uh, exploratory data analysis, I think is always the first step for every analysis process. We need to explore to draw insights uh, from the data, I think before we even think of uh, going, going into the modeling aspect. I think uh, the data, the presentation, I think it was clear. I, I think I really learned one or two things for that I was able to pick from the discussion. So uh, I've been talking uh, since uh, morning, as I said earlier, I was in a conference in which we just, I just jumped out from another conference to step into another presentation. Oh yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I think uh, the next chapter is about uh, reproducible, uh, about reprex. So I will 
at the Infame Koma Tata. He signed up for the chapter, but I will try and reach, get in touch with him to inform him so that he will make, in case he's unable to present uh, the chapter, I will go ahead and present. We'll still meet next week, uh, Monday, hopefully. So thank you again, I think, uh, for that. I don't have any other comments. So that is where we'll wrap up for today. And we'll see you next week, uh, Monday, for, for the other discussion for chapter 11, which is about getting help. Thank you so much. Okay, welcome.